Dr. Janine Show, I'm so happy to have you here today. Please say hello and where you're streaming in from today. And we're going to say hello to people from all over the world, which happens every Tuesday here at the Dr. Janine Show. Hey, why am I in the kitchen? Well, we're going to be coming back making the viral flaxseed mask that's supposed to be like Botox on the skin. I'm telling you, the results from this are amazing. We're coming back here to talk all about that. I'm going to show you and give you the recipe, how to mix that up, and you are going to love this for your skin. So if you have dark spots, acne helps to smooth out those fine lines and wrinkles and has that sort of freezing effect on the skin, you're going to love it. Amazing, amazing. We're also talking fake vitamins, something that we often talk about. So we're coming back with that. We're talking about leptin, leptin resistance. And often we talk about why it's so important to get that leptin resistance under control. But what happens when we don't is that we gain that weight. And what other things are implicated in leptin resistance is, of course, our thyroid health. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that, that pregnenolone steel. If you missed last week's episode, we're going to revisit that. I'm going to go through that, our cortisol levels, why that's so important to get that under control, and how that's related back to that leptin resistance. We're going to talk about those thyroid hormones and a blood test that you can ask for to make sure that you don't have that leptin resistance. And this is related to the thyroid as well, which is amazing. And last week, if you we're also, sorry, I have to tell you, we're also talking about candida. So I had so many questions from you about candida and what we can do naturally. So that's coming up as well. So don't go anywhere. You know that this is a fun, interactive show. You're going to love it. We do have quiz questions coming up, a fill in the blanks as well today. So make sure that you're paying attention as I'm speaking through the show because it's a little bit of a two-way street here. You're going to get the information, but then I'm going to quiz you on some of that information as well. Welcome in. Say hello. Nice to see you, Ms. B. Hello. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. And Aliza, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Jerry, nice to see you. Good morning or good afternoon. Hello, Susa. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to ask you if you do have questions. I will answer some questions towards the end of the show. I'll also give you the heads up of our live Q&A that happens on Wednesdays, so stay tuned for that. We'll give you some information about that as well. And I see so many questions coming in. Virginia, Eleanor, nice to see you. Good morning. Sheila, hello. Caesar, hello. Nice to see you as well. Monica in Myrtle Beach, hello. Thank you for tuning tuning in. I hope it's nice and sunny and lovely there. Virgo Queen from the Bahamas. Hello. I hope it's beautiful there. I'm sure it is. Please make sure you share today's live. I see that Jerry is sharing already. Thank you so much. Hit to share. Hit that like button. Tap your screen. Whatever it takes. I see those hearts coming through. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all those gifts that come out through the show as well. So thank you so much to all of your generosity, which makes the show possible in the first place. Now, if you missed last week's show, we talked about dirty fasting. How many people did the dirty fasting? If you don't know what that is, we can bring it up at towards the end of the show as well. We also talked about leptin resistance and how that's related to our immune system. We talked about fake olive oil and also our adrenals. So we'll, we'll sort of touch on the adrenals a bit today as well, which is so important. So say hello. Thank you so much, Layla, Veronica, Amu. Thank you. Nice to see you all here. Violet, thank you for tuning in. Mona as well, Veronica. And you've got some questions as well, so save those questions. Okay, all right, the good Max. Good morning in the Philippines, great to have you here. Okay, so let's talk first about vitamins. And unfortunately, most of the B complexes, so most of the vitamins that you are going to find in the marketplace are fake. So when we're talking about fake B vitamins, there's certain things to look for on your label. So this is what I want to point out to you. Come on in to, and let's look at a label so that you can start to discern for yourself what to actually look for to know that this is fake or maybe a real vitamin. And I've got a list of things to look for in an actual real and a clean vitamin. Okay, so that list is coming up that you can screenshot if you have the ability to do that. We also have an essential oil blend coming up for psoriasis, which is amazing to help to clear up the skin. So that's coming up as well. Okay, when we look at this label, for instance, our B vitamins, it says vitamin B1, thiamine mononitrate. So you see that chemical name in the brackets, that's a good indicator that that's a fake vitamin, that B vitamin. You see B2, riboflavin. You see those chemical names, pyridoxine for vitamin B6, pyridoxine hydrochloride in the brackets. That doesn't sound like a fruit or a vegetable, right? So this is one way that you can sort of say, hey, I wonder what the source of that vitamin is, especially those B complexes, which are supposed to be good for stress. Well, guess what? It's going to stress out your system if you're <laughs> ingesting these because they're chemically based and often they're coming from the petrochemical industry. So I want you to really be aware of that. These are the things to look for that are not so good. 
Okay, but I'm going to give you a list of things to look for that are good. Of course, we're going to go over here and I'm going to be able to give you that list. So you really have to do your due diligence when you're taking vitamins to make sure that they're from a natural whole food source. We're also going to be doing our beautiful flaxseed mask that's coming up in the beauty set in just a bit. So actually, no, that's going to be in the kitchen. We've got something else happening in the beauty set for psoriasis. So that's coming up in a few minutes as well. But let's look at this really quickly. When we look at now real clean B vitamins, what should you be looking for? I've got a list that you can screenshot once it's all up here, okay? So number one, you wanna look somewhere on the label, or the company is a reputable company, and it says whole food vitamin, okay? So that's really important, meaning that those nutrients are derived from a whole food source, not the synthetic ones. Okay, number two on the list, it's a GMP manufacturer, usually a good company, they're gonna put that right on the label, it's usually in a little circle, it'll say GMP. Good manufacturing practices, really important to look for that because that means it's a reputable company, okay? Number three, no magnesium stearate. Where's my magnesium stearate? So if you're new here, you know that I talk a lot about this, I do demonstrations on this. This is important to know because magnesium stearate is a flow agent. It's not natural. We wanna make sure that we're not ingesting this. It is a chemical, if you look on your labels, most times it's going to have a whole list of these non-medicinal ingredients. You see that? Magnesium stearate, one of the things to avoid. So make sure there's no magnesium stearate in your vitamins. Okay, hit that share button. Thank you so much. If this is new information for a lot of you, which I know it is, and if you've never you know, tuned into any of my information, into my lives, into my content, welcome on in. Please say hello and where you're from. And make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And of course, make sure that you are following. Thank you so much, Mujiani. I think that's how I pronounce it. Deb, thank you for the share. Awesome, awesome. Great to have you all here today. There's so many of you here. Amazing, amazing. I see somebody's here from South Africa. Hello, thank you for tuning in. Okay. Now, let's go on to number four. We also want to make sure that in a real clean vitamin that there's no microcrystalline cellulose. So what is that? That is a flow agent. It's a filler, okay? So what they do is they put this, it's basically made from wood chips and bark, and they put this in to fill up capsules to make it look like you're getting more value in your actual vitamin bottle when you're not. They're just filling up the capsules with this filler, okay? So another thing that you don't necessarily wanna be ingesting, it can cause some digestive upset, especially if you have a sensitive tummy, okay? Number five on the list, no silicon dioxide. That's another one that they use as a flow agent. It's a filler, it's a whitening agent, and silicon dioxide helps to dry things up, so it helps with the longevity, with the shelf life of that vitamin, so you don't wanna be ingesting that. Number six on the list, equally as toxic, titanium dioxide. So silicon dioxide and titanium dioxide are actually quite similar and found in most vitamins out there. And this is what I'm telling you, you've got to start reading your labels. You don't want to be ingesting this. The problem with this, unfortunately, is that there has been some linked to DNA damage and cell damage with ingesting this, even putting it on your skin, super toxic. They actually banned it in France three years ago, and now the entire European Union has gotten rid of titanium dioxide. But guess what? It's still allowed here, where I live in Canada and North America, it's still allowed in supplements and in other beauty products as well. Make sure you're not ingesting that in your vitamins, okay? And number seven on the list, other uh, fillers and flow agents. And when we go back to that label really quickly, there's a bunch. So when we look, again, you're looking on your labels, non-medicinal ingredients. Really, there shouldn't be anything there besides maybe the capsule. Cross caramelose sodium, cross povidone, gelatin, hypromellose, magnesium serine, maltodextrin. I mean, these are all polysorbate 80. I mean, ugh. These things and triacetin, I mean, these things, should, they're chemicals. They should not be something that you're ingesting in your so-called natural healthy vitamins, okay? So this is really, really important information. Give me a thumbs up if you're loving this information. Thank you so much. And if you're here for the first time, please put a one in the comments. Thank you, Hard Jarla. Thank you. I think you shared it for like 20 times. Thank you so much for sharing today's live. I see all those hearts coming in. Keep it flowing. Thank you. Love all the love here that we have. And uh, GRC in the Netherlands, thank you for tuning in. It's so great to have you all here. Ewan Carrillo, Diva Organic is here. Sandra, J uh, Jaffrey, Nadia is here. Hello. 
David, Sandra, Daniel. Oh my goodness, so many people. I can't keep up. So if I don't call you out, I'm so sorry. I can't, I can't call out everybody. Millie, De La Prida, Jeffrey, Uncle Louie is here. Kenneth, William, Mary, uh, Lomau. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuning in today. So great to have you all here. Continue to say hello. Yes, lots of thumbs up and lots of number one. So a lot of new people, make sure you hit that share. And of course, that subscribe and that follow button. So great to have you all here today. I'm Dr. Janine, if you've not met before, naturopathic doctor and educator about all things natural. Okay, we want to now showcase our viewers spotlight. So every week we have a new, you know, wonderful person that we call out who has shared some positive information, comments, reviews on my social media platforms. And this is from Patty. So this is from Patty. And Patty said, with you, I have improved my health so much. Thank you from Ecuador. So Patty Andrade, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you're here today. Give us a shout out if you are actually here live today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for all that positive feedback, it really does mean the world. Okay, to me, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's go over here and now talk about our skin. So we talked in the previous few weeks about something called leptin resistance. I'll give you a really quick review on that. We do have now something else, our thyroid health, as that's related to leptin and pregnenolone steel. So that's gonna come up in a few moments, but let's talk about psoriasis. And this is a chronic autoimmune and very inflammatory condition for anybody who has psoriasis. Of course, you know that this is so troublesome and it can sort of wax and wane. It comes, it goes, or it's constant all the time. I've got some great tips for you because this is so important from the leptin perspective and from that inflammatory perspective that we're actually addressing this naturally. We can see in normal healthy skin that of course we have all the different layers of the skin and that is we have the epidermis, the dermis and the hypodermis, okay? And this is where the blood flow is down here. Now what happens in psoriasis is that there's a quicker turnover rate and that's why we see the flaking and those scales that keep coming off and we have that very inflamed skin so this is then tied back to that leptin resistance with high leptin levels, of course, we've got that chronic inflammation and now the brain isn't reading that leptin signaling. And this has actually been found in the research now that leptin can aggravate the psoriasis. So let's take a look really quickly at this study, which is really interesting that results suggest that leptin can aggravate psoriasis by interfering with the differentiation of keratinocytes by inducing insulin resistance. So isn't that interesting? So we know that the leptin, the insulin resistance are connected. It's something that we talked about for the last few weeks. So if this is a review for you, amazing, amazing. If it's the first time you're like, what, what's going on here? This is really important. Look back at the last few episodes to get up to speed as to why this is so important that we're tackling and addressing this leptin resistance, okay? So really important. Now let's talk about some tips because I know that you're wondering, okay, Fine, great, it's related to leptin. What do I do? How do I fix it? How do I get rid of my psoriasis? And this is so, so helpful for so many people who suffer with psoriasis. I have seen psoriasis completely disappear just by following these tips, okay? So this is what we're gonna look at. Now, we'll also be talking about candida today. So I had a lot of questions from my viewers, my followers about candida. So that information is coming up as well. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget, we have our quiz questions coming up as well, okay? So super, super jam-packed show today. All right, let's take a look at this. What are some tips? I've got six tips for psoriasis. Tip number one, you got to get that natural sunlight in your eyes, on your skin. The sun heals your skin. Don't believe all of that misinformation out there that the skin is damaging, the sun is damaging, it's going to wreck your skin. There's a lot of misinformation. With the right dosage of natural sunlight exposure, you will heal your skin. Super, super important. I've got other videos all about the sun and how to do it properly and how to photo adapt and do all of these great things. That means no, you notice here that I say no sun, the, getting the sun in your eyes and on the skin, on, in the eyes means no sunglasses, okay? So this is important. You've gotta let your eyes now adapt to that natural sunlight exposure. You've gotta allow that sun to get into your eyes, okay? Really important. Number two, another tip for psoriasis. No sugar, <laughs> and I know a lot of you want to click off right now. No, this is important. Limit the sugar at the beginning because if you're a sugaraholic and you love it, then yeah, I know like stopping cold turkey may not be what you can do. Limit the sugar, but hey, if you can go cold turkey off the sugar, you're going to see your skin and your psoriasis clear up so much more quickly. 
to fix that leptin, but also the insulin resistance. So when our blood glucose levels are too high, this is going to increase, of course, that metabolic syndrome and, of course, our insulin resistance. We've got to manage that. This really is going to help to lower that overall inflammation and help really help with that psoriasis. Okay, really important. Number three, full body detox, getting those toxins out of the organs, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys. Let's look at Lucy really quickly. Doing that full body detox, you hear me talk about this in a lot of my videos, that we've got to clear those toxins out. So whether it's in the lungs, the liver, of course, the stomach, digestive tract, in the gut, in the fat tissue as well, of course, the cardiovascular system, the lymphatic system, that's why I talk a lot about castor oil and how we can use castor oil packs to really help. So if you've missed any of those videos, you can check them out after today's live. Really important. Okay, hit that subscribe button. If you're new here for the first time, put a one in the comments as well. Thank you for all my new followers, all my new subscribers. I know there's so many, like a ton of new people here today, which is amazing. Hit that share button as well. So great to see you. And thank you for all the gifts and the hearts and tapping your screen and doing all those fun things. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's continue. Number four, you've got to fix that gut microbiome. So again, this is so important that we have that healthy gut. And going back to Lucy really quickly, that healthy gut microbiome has a lot to do with your immunity because remember, psoriasis has an autoimmune component. So this is where the leaky gut syndrome and, you know, when we've got those tight junctions in the gut that are opening up. Now we've got an autoimmune issue happening because we don't have and we haven't fixed our microbiome. This is really important for your skin conditions, any skin condition, not just psoriasis. It could be any type of skin condition, okay? So this is important. All right, so let's continue our list. Number five. Improve that skin barrier function, yes. So one of the best things to do this is eating more seafood. So upping your DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, that DHA is so important because that fish in that seafood is going to provide that DHA. Maybe a high quality DHA supplement is really important as well for, of course, that skin barrier function. Okay, number five. And we got number six is a topical oil blend. So we're going to be blending this up in a few minutes. So stay tuned for that. I've got this beautiful blend of essential oils, which, and, and one of those ingredients actually has some science behind it. It has a study behind it that it actually helps with that psoriasis specifically. Okay, so we're going to be mixing that up. You're going to love it. And then you can, of course, screenshot that recipe so that you've got it. All right, are we ready? Guess what time it is, everyone. Everybody who's been here for a while, you know exactly what time it is. It's quiz time. All right, so we have quiz question number one coming up. Everybody, just do your best to answer the questions. Super easy. Well, I think two out of the three questions today are very easy. The third one might be a little bit more challenging, so just to give you a heads up, you're going to love this part of the show. Amazing. What we're playing for is the Pair of E. This is from our great sponsors at VitaTree. We thank them for making the Dr. Janine show possible in the first place. Amazing, amazing. All you have to do, you've got 30 seconds. Once you see that question and that clock comes up, get your answers in. Just do your best. Are we ready? Okay, here we go. It's a true or false question. Leptin resistance is correlated to psoriasis. Everybody get your answers in. You've got 30 seconds. Where's that clock? All right, true or false, get your answers in. Okay, we've got five seconds left. Everybody get your answers in. I hope everybody has their answers in. Yes, yes, I saw mostly correct answers. Everybody got their answers in, yes? Okay, what is the answer? Let's reveal it. Of course, it is true. Good job, everyone. Okay, you have a couple more opportunities to answer those questions, so make sure that you are searching for that. Okay, now, where are we going next? Let's see. Hello, hello, Al, Kim. Nice to see you, Jagdish. Uh, Duane Kusma, uh, Minamotaratam. Is that right? I'm not sure. Um, Raytha, nice to see you. David, Jay, hello. Diefig35, great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I do want to announce last week's winner, okay? So make sure you're always following Team Dr. J9. And if you see Team Dr. J9 is answering some questions and comments, that's my team member behind the scenes to, of 
course, help with running and answering all of your comments and your questions. So make sure you're following them so that if you are on certain platforms, that of course we can reach out to you if you're our lucky winner. Now, last time's winner of the Vac Acu Blood Sugar Balance from VitaTree was Morphia Apostolus. Congratulations, Morphia. Awesome job. And of course, even if you're a winner, you can still play the quiz. We have some winners that have won more than one time. So don't think that just because you've won once that you can't win the next time. Absolutely, you can continue to participate in all of our quiz questions. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, let's go through a little bit of what we talked about last week, and that's the pregnenolone steel. And we're going to talk today about the, th where's my thyroid? Well, I know where my thyroid is, but where's my, my model thyroid? For in terms of talking about thyroid health and how that's related to our leptin levels and something called pregnenolone steel. So if you were here last week, you know that we talked about this. This is going to be a little bit of a review, but I didn't really focus in on the thyroid health and how this is all tied in. Thank you very much. Okay, so when we look at cholesterol has our breakdown product into pregnenolone. Now in times of stress, and when we have pregnenolone steel syndrome, what's happening is that preferentially we've got too much cortisol being made. So you know when people are burnt out, they're stressed all the time, they work out too much, they do crazy things, they're, they do fasting the wrong way. This will increase your cortisol levels and now we've got that pregnenolone steel which is going to decrease testosterone, it will decrease estrogen, and it can deplete progesterone because now all of that's going towards your cortisol. It can also affect your blood pressure levels, okay? That is the pregnenolone steel. Now, how is this related to your thyroid? So you're sluggish, you're tired, you're gaining weight, you've got dry skin, you're cold all the time, your hair is falling out, you're, the outer third of your eyebrow hair is falling out, you've got all the classic symptoms of low thyroid. Maybe you're even medicated for your thyroid and your thyroid is low and you're still not feeling better. Okay, so this is for you. This information is for you because this was me and this is what I had to learn for myself. Even though knowing all of those good things that I was doing with my vitamins, my exercise and all those things, I still didn't have a handle on what was really the true root cause of what was happening with my energy levels, my thyroid. And it was because of the leptin resistance, okay? Now what happens when your cortisol levels are high, so high cortisol here is gonna drive that T4 to T3 conversion shuts down. So normally your T4 has to convert to the active form, your T3. You know when you get your blood work done for your thyroid hormones and if you've seen an endocrinologist, they're testing T3, T4, TSH, all these things. Well, this is what's important. They're looking at what, how much active hormone do you have. If your T3 is high or low, that's gonna be an indicator of thyroid health, okay? So this is the problem. So with that high stress level now, that is going to be messing up your thyroid because you don't have that proper conversion to your T3. More importantly, your body is gonna make something called reverse T3. Three, and that is high when you've got that leptin resistance. Remember, the whole thing is the leptin signaling that's offsetting this whole pregnenolone steel and that high inflammation. Okay, so this is all tying back now to your thyroid. That high reverse T3 is an indicator of leptin resistance. So it's a blood test that you can actually have done. If it's high, it may be indicating that, yeah, you might got some, have some leptin resistance happening, okay? So that's important for you to know. Everybody got that? Yes, yes, okay, good, I'm so glad. I know our little lesson, I love to teach, so this is so much fun for me as well. Let's continue now with some fill in the blanks, okay? We're gonna be going into and talking about some essential oils specifically for skin conditions and psoriasis. That's coming up in the beauty set in just a second, but let's do some fill in the blanks, okay? This is where I need audience participation. Is everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Albana, you're so lovely. Thank you so much. And yes, I see that comment, user 765. I think a lot of people are in that boat if everybody's saying users uh, 765. Comment. Okay, here we go. Fill in the blanks. Are we ready? Here we go. Number one, signs and symptoms of candida. <clears throat> so candida is that yeast overgrowth that maybe give you this symptom. What would that be? What are we craving when we've got candida? Okay, it's coming in summer. I see that. Jai, Joy, uh, Des, AA. I, okay, everybody knows this. Jurly, Sandra. Everybody's got this. Stacy, uh, Akila, Jessica. I see it. Maria, uh, Kari. Yes, okay, exactly. Sally, you've got it. Uh, Rosa's got it as well. Otero, Otero, yes. Okay, so yes. So sugar cravings when you have candida. 
sugar cravings, okay? This is really, really common when you've got a candida issue. And you've, you've got some, I wanted to give it away, but here we go. Number two, okay, another sign and symptom. What happens with the brain? There's a short word that I'm looking here. Um, let's see who gets it. Yeah, ha, yes, well, wow, we're quick. We are quick, shazam, I see that answer. Awesome job, Skyla, Lula. Oh my goodness, I can't even keep up with all your answers. Sunshine, Mumsy, yes, hello, nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. That's Gray Munzi, uh, Lian Lee, yes, yes, yes. Okay, brain fog, another common symptom of having that candida. Okay, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hey, thank you, Edna, for the follow. Awesome to have you here. If you're here for the first time, we do this every Tuesday at this time zone, okay? So this is Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. every Tuesday. Now, we also have, and we'll bring up a slide in just a few seconds when we're done our fill in the blanks, about tomorrow's Q&A on Wednesdays, which is fairly new now. We do that at 1 p.m. We'll bring that up in a second. Okay. Number three on my list, fill in the blanks. Another sign and symptom of well, this, yeah, not so pleasant, this one. Okay, everybody get your answers in. What kind of infections are we getting here? Uh-huh, yep, Lula, you've got that right answer. White butterfly, Sarah, yes, Kristen, I see all, uh, yeah, I see actually multiple answers that are actually correct, which is very good. The one that I was looking for is what the one that I, that I've, Robin, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so usually, and this is a chronic thing, yeast infections, okay? And both men and women, so it's not just a women's thing, guys. Just, just so you know, just so you know, okay? Uh, number four on the list is number, well, let's see. Let's fill in the blank, number four. Okay, what's happening with digestion when we've got candida? Everybody get your answers in. I hope you've got it, yes, 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 exactly, carrot had it quick. Okay, gas and bloating, absolutely, with that chronic candida and you've got that distended abdomen. So you may wake up with a flat tummy, and then as the day goes on, the more food that you eat, you may look like you're seven, eight months pregnant. That's usually a candida issue, okay? And number five on the list is, aha, uh -huh, what's happening here with the immune system? What is happening with the immune system? Let me see, Jai, thank you for the follow. Amazing to have you here. I know so many people here for the first time today. Yes, exactly. I see uh, Tiffany, good job. Awaken Life Essentials is here as well. And I see David, yeah, I got a lot of good answers here. Tutu, Tuto, um, very good. So weak immune system, that's what I was looking for, a weak immune system. Okay, so these are common signs and symptoms of, of course, that chronic candida. And if you've ever had candida or if you have candida now, hey, you can do a candida cleanse or whatever and think that, oh, you're d good for life. No, it comes back if you don't do it properly, okay? So these are some of the things that I like to share in my information and, of course, to help you in a natural way. I do want to thank and shout out to my super fans. So thank you so much for all of your generosity. It happens during the live shows. It happens throughout the week with all of the posts that we, you know, are putting out so much content on a weekly basis. I thank you all. Thank you for all those hearts coming th through as well. Thank you for supporting my channel so that I can come out and speak to you every week. It's so great that you're all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's great to have you all here. Veronica, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's talk about some tips. So what are we doing about this candida issue, which of course is chronic for so many people? Let's talk about some tips and I have a list for you that you're going to be able to screenshot. We will be making that flaxseed mask, so that viral flaxseed mask. I don't know how many people have heard about it. Put a two in the comments if you've heard about the viral flaxseed mask for your face and for longevity. It works like a natural Botox, supposedly. We're going to talk about that. That's coming up in the kitchen in just a few minutes. So yes, if you've heard about that, yeah, I know a lot of you have. Exactly. Carrot, white butterfly. I see that. Okay. Let's go through now some tips for candida, though. This is really important, especially if it's a chronic issue. Number one on the list, go out into nature. Now, why is that? Did you know that you affect your microbiome, so your gut health, by your surroundings, even more so than anything that you ingest into your body? So touching, feeling, being out, taking off your shoes, being out in nature is going to have a positive influence on your own microbiome, your skin microbiome, your gut microbiome all your microbiomes, okay? So that's really important. You want to go out into nature. Okay, number two on the list. You want to lower your EMF exposure, yeah. 
So your cell phone is going to, and studies have been done on this, that actually that frequency from cell phones and other forms of non-ionizing radiation, so you know these frequencies have a negative effect and they grow some of the less favorable organisms, so molds and things, this has been tested, as well as less favorable organisms that are in your microbiome. So that's really important. So you've got to lower your cell phone exposure. Just try to take breaks from it. A lot of people are super addicted to their cell phones. Just try to take those breaks, okay? That's going to have a good impact on your system, your microbiome, your immune system, and of course that candida if you have it. Okay, number three on the list is stop the sugar. I mean, this goes without saying. I think we talked about this earlier. When we open up this show, and thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you so much, and thanks for hitting that share button. I see so many people are sharing and following. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you to have you here. Okay, number four is fiber. Yes, yeah, so increasing your fiber actually gives food to the good guys in the gut, to your healthy microbiome. So that's really important in terms of upping your fiber, and this is where a lot of people are not getting enough fiber, and guess what happens? I have to bring out the poop platter. If you've seen this on social media, yeah, it's me talking about the poop. So when you're lacking in fiber, you can sometimes have those pencil, very thin stools. Ideally, you want to have a nice stool, kind of looks like a dark sinker, a log. It could be an S-shaped as well. I know it's the wrong color, but that's just what was available when we were making these with the kids. And if you're lacking in fiber, it could be an indicator. So if you've got the poops that look like this, what I call the meatball poop, or maybe even the rabbit pellet type of poop, that could be an indicator, is, again, that you're lacking in fiber. You don't have enough bulk in the stool to actually have that proper bowel movement, okay? So that's really important. Make sure that you're optimizing your fiber levels for that candida. Okay, number five, Cabo. So the herbal medicines is something that we've talked about in the previous couple of shows, Cabo. Cloves, artemisia, black walnut, and oregano. That's my favorite combination of herbal medicines that I take four times a year. I do a whole protocol four times a year, even if I don't have or think I have candida at the time. It helps to kill parasites and other nasties that are in the gut microbiome, really helps to strengthen your immune system. That combination super, super important, okay? And number six, so after killing, you've got to put the good guys back in, our probiotics. So we've had some you know, talk and some information about that in previous episodes, why it's so important to find the right probiotic to put the good guys back in. So there, there you have it. So if you want to screenshot that really quickly so that you've got it, the tips for candida. I've got videos on candida as well. So just know in all the social media platforms now, all you have to do is put in my name, Dr. Janine Baring, and your search term, whatever it may be, and you can actually look up a topic that you're interested in. And you most times you're going to find a video. I've got, I, I don't know how many. We have to make a check on that. How many videos? We have like three, 4,000 videos now. And if you don't find the topic that you want more information on, make sure that you're letting our team know. Put it in the comments, send us an email so that we are able to do that. Now, I do want to call out really quickly. I promised I would show you really quickly the slides. So for tomorrow, so on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is when we have our Q&A. So you'll have an opportunity to ask me your live questions tomorrow. Make sure you tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. I can't wait to hear you and talk to you then. All right. Amazing, amazing. Nice to have you all here. 3.7 thousand videos. On, and that's just on one platform, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's go over here because I have a great recipe, and this is so important for skin conditions. Now, this is specifically what is blended up for psoriasis. So psoriasis, we know that chronic, if you're just tuning in now, we talked about it earlier, that chronic you know, autoimmune condition when your skin is flaking and peeling. It can be on the scalp, it can be on the extensor areas, so not on the inside. On the inside of your elbow would be eczema. On the outside is the psoriasis, and the same on the knees, on, of course, those outsides of the knees. Really important to know that you can blend something up to use topically. That's completely natural. There's no steroid in here. There's no negative effects on your immune system, which is so important because some of the creams and things, they have negative side effects, which are systemic. It's going to go into your systemic circulation and into your bloodstream when you're using some of those other topicals. And they're chemically based, which of course I don't like so much as using natural things. And this has been proven effective. So one study with one of the ingredients, and we're going to show you in just a second, 
is going to help with that plaque formation. And that, of course, is the lavender. So one of the ingredients in the recipe. And we've got this recipe for you. Okay, so all you need is some coconut oil. So two tablespoons of coconut oil. Again, this is for psoriasis if you're just tuning in, but it will help other skin conditions as well. But this is specifically for the plaques of that psoriasis to help to soften the skin, but also has sort of uh, an antiseptic effect because often when we've got a lot of that inflammation and that skin is peeling off, there could be some bad bugs in there and that skin microbiome is disrupted. So that's why these specific you know, uh, essential oils are very timely in terms of helping with the psoriasis. Okay, then you're gonna add five drops of that tea tree oil into your mix. And I got six, but that's all. I always say one for good luck, right? If you're loving this, put a one in the comments. Love to have you all here today. Thank you so much. We have some more quiz questions coming up, so that's coming up. Okay, then we've got five drops of peppermint. So you don't need to remember this. We do have a slide, and we're going to show you this recipe. I love the peppermint. So soothing to the skin, especially when it's inflamed. And we've got our lavender, so five drops of lavender. I'm going to pop up that study again for you really quickly. Well, I'm not going to pop it up, but my team is going to pop it up. One, two, three, four, five. And this just smells so lovely. There we go. And you're just going to mix that up. So I just kind of swish it around as such, and then you're going to apply it to wherever you have that psoriasis. If it's on the scalp, you're going to do this at bedtime, and then you can shampoo it out in the morning, leave it on overnight. If it's you've got the plaques anywhere else, you're just going to Every day, you're just applying a little bit of this. It's so soothing. And it actually has relief because any if you've ever used tea tree or peppermint, it has like a little bit of a cooling uh, sensation when you put it on. Amazing for that inflamed skin, helping to quell that inflammation and that heat and that, that fire that we talk about in traditional Chinese medicine helps to quell that. Okay, so looking at the study again, that proves the effectiveness of that lavender oil and its major phytoconstituents, so the linalool and the linalool acetate against that induced psoriasis. Now, this was a study done on mice, poor little mice that they gave psoriasis to, and it was chemically induced. But yeah, this was the result with just one of the ingredients, remember, in that essential oil blend. So here it is. I want you to screenshot this really quickly. I want, if you do have psoriasis or try this on other skin conditions, hey, if you've got eczema, it will help with the eczema as well. You're going to mix all your ingredients, your coconut oil, your tea tree, essential oil, peppermint oil, lavender, and there you go. There's the ratio. Put that into a glass container, essentially, is the best way, of course, for those essential oils to help to preserve those oils, which is amazing. And then you're going to use a cotton swab, and you can apply that to the, or the little tip, you know what I mean. Um, and apply that to the spots. If you've got a bigger area, then just use your fingers and, and rub it in there, okay? I hope you love that and use that to your advantage. All natural ingredients, which is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Deanna, yes, it will. Yes, it will, absolutely, okay? And uh, beans, uh, people asking for other skin conditions, absolutely, try it out. I mean, they're all natural ingredients and it is going to really help. And yes, they are essential oils, constant nods. Yes, they're all essential oils, okay. We're at quiz question number two already. Okay, so this is a true or false question. Remember, just get your answers in. You've got a 50-50 chance. We're playing from our great sponsors at Vitatree Nutritionals, the Paravid. Okay, so this is really important. Great way to now answer these questions. Are we ready? Okay, here we go. True or false? Let's go. You're going to have 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go. In pregnenolone steel syndrome, cortisol is being made preferentially over other downstream hormones. Let's see who is paying attention. You've got 30 seconds. Let's see that clock come up. You got 30 seconds on the clock. Let's get your answers in. Good luck, everyone. Okay. Just about 15 seconds left here. I hope. Everybody was paying attention. Wow, such smart little pupils we have today. Awesome, Andrea, thank you for the follow. Amazing, amazing. All right, we got all our answers in. Yes? Okay, I think I saw mostly correct answers. Some of them were a good try. The answer, of course, let's see it, is true. So if you're just tuning in, you don't know what we're talking about, this was our second quiz question. We still have one more quiz question coming up in the show. This was information that we talked about today and that pregnenolone steel and why, you know, if your cortisol levels are messed up and you've got adrenal issues, usually 
this is going to have an effect, of course, with that high cortisol on your thyroid. It's going to have an effect on your energy levels, your ability to gain or lose weight, which I know for a lot of people is a concern, and that's why we talk a lot about weight loss here at the Dr. Janine Show and getting at the root cause as to why you're not losing that weight. And that's what I like to share and tying that back to the leptin resistance, which is something that really helped me in terms of my own thyroid function and getting healthier and more energy and out of inflammatory sort of processes and not being in pain all the time, which, you know, you think, hey, part of aging, you're going to have some pain, some aches and pains, but yeah, it's not necessarily a normal thing. It's tied back to those hormones and that pregnenolone and steel and that leptin resistance. Okay, guess what? We're in the kitchen. Now, this is fun. Now, how many people, I know I asked this question earlier, put in the one in the comments. I know, I know a lot of you have seen, you've heard about the flax seed mask, which went viral on social media, you know, I'm going to say a couple months ago. Amazing, amazing. So we're going to mix this up. It's super simple, like, like stupid simple. It's so, so easy. And we know that flax seeds, by their nature, have those omega-3 fats, and which is great for acne. Of course, it's very anti-inflammatory, so any type of inflammation, even for the eczema, this could be, you know, something that you're doing with the essential oil blend that we just did for the psoriasis as well. If you've got dark spots and acne scars, fantastic for wrinkles because it has a bit of a freezing effect. So on social media, they talk about this as being sort of like the natural Botox. It has a freezing effect on the skin. So great, you know, in that regard as well. And of course, all natural. So all you're going to do, which is super easy, you need water. So you're going to boil some water. So we boiled our water earlier today, about two cups. You're going to use a mason jar and I, you know, have different sizes. So I did it a smaller one. I adjusted my ratios just a little bit. But in a normal size mason jar, you're going to put two cups of water over your flax seeds. So in the, your flax seeds, you're going to have, again, in your ratio. I use the golden flax seeds. Of course, there's different types of flax seeds, but it's the full seed. Okay, so don't get the already flaxseed meal. That's not going to work as well for you. You want to use the full flax seeds. Can everybody see that on the camera? I just hope that everybody... Because when you go to the store, if you don't, if you haven't purchased flax seeds before, you may say, oh, okay, here's it says flax seeds on the label. You want to make sure that it's the full seed. Okay, so you're going to add a half a cup of the full flax seeds into your mason jar. There we go. And then you're pouring your hot water on top. So I said it was simple, super simple. And sometimes, depending on how hot the water is, I like to put a spoon in there so that we don't crack anything in terms of the temperature change. So you're going to fill that up. There we go. And now I like to stir it a little bit. And that is going to form this sort of jelly because of the flax seeds and by their nature and the fiber that they have within them. So then you just seal that up and put that in the fridge. And that has to be in the fridge overnight. They say, uh, you know, up to six hours. I, I prefer it actually overnight in the fridge. And then you're going to have in the morning this combination. And you can see it's a little bit watery on top, but then you need some cheesecloth, okay? So with your cheesecloth, I like to just put the cheesecloth in, it's doubled up, okay, in my bowl. Can everybody see that? I hope so. And then I either spoon it out. If I don't want it as liquidy, I'm trying to grab as many of those flax seeds as possible. And you can see that there's a bit of a gel already formed around the flax seeds. And there we go. And then what you're doing is you are going to strain that out. So you're going to be squeezing, squeezing. I don't know if everybody can see that jelly. Can you see that jelly, that gooeyness that's coming out of the flax seeds? And here we go. See how shiny and jelly that is? And that is exactly what you are putting on your skin. Can everybody see that? I hope you can see it because it's just, it's so beautiful because it's so gooey and you can see the consistency, how it's dripping out. It's not like water. It's actually like a gooey, gooey type of consistency. And I'm just going to rub that on my hand so that you can see that. But there you go. So you put that on your clean, so your washed, clean face. You're going to put that on, and you're going to let it stay there for a minimum 20 minutes. Now, what it does when it's drying is it actually kind of hardens your skin. And that's why it's kind of like the Botox effect, because you kind of feel like, oh, I don't have as much motion in my facial muscles when this is on. And then what you're going to do is just take a nice face cloth and you're going to wipe that off after the 20 minutes. Okay, so that is amazing. Let's take a look at the recipe really quickly so that you've got it. And it's 
right here. Here we go, the flaxseed mask. And okay, so maybe let me grab that really quickly so that we can see it again. So we're making that flaxseed mask for our skin and you can see that nice jelly consistency. Here's the recipe. Take a look at this really quickly. You've got your water, so you're gonna boil that water and you're gonna pour that over your flax seeds and you're gonna let that sit overnight in, of course, the fridge. Then you're gonna strain it through your cheesecloth. I have two layers of cheesecloth, okay? And then you're gonna put it on your skin. You're gonna let it sit for a minimum of 20 minutes, and then you're gonna wash it away with some warm water. I hope you try this. It is so amazing. You're gonna love it. I keep this then in the fridge for up to a couple of weeks so you can reuse it. Now, if you wanted to squeeze out your whole batch and then keep what you've squeezed out in another glass container, you could definitely do that. I like to sort of leave it in the flax seeds and then make the dosage that I need accordingly, if that makes sense, with my cheesecloth. So I make it, I squeeze it fresh every time. I hope you love this. Okay, we are already at quiz question number three. We will come back. Hey, if we're moving too quick for anyone, we can always call up any of these slides and recipes towards the end of the show. So just make sure you put it in the comments. Okay, we are playing for the pair of bead from our great sponsors at Vita Tree who support this show. That's why I'm able to come here every week, which is amazing. Okay, this is your last opportunity for quiz questions for this week's show. And let's see who's paying attention. This is actually a great question. Are we ready? Okay, everybody get your answers in. You've got 30 seconds on the clock. Once we see that question come up, here we go. What is the thyroid blood work test that may indicate leptin resistance? Let's see who is paying attention. Okay, you got 30 seconds on the clock. Everybody get your answers in. Okay, get them in, let's see. Okay, everybody getting your answers in. Let's see, do I have, oh, I see some very good answers. What is, that test, wow, wow, I'm super impressed. Five seconds left, get your answers in. Everybody sees it, yes, yes, okay. I was very impressed. Okay, some people said T3, T4, yes, those are true, but I was looking for this answer, which of course is reverse T3. So whoever put RT3, those ends, Matt, you even got, yes, of course, the, the, Nice abbreviation, amazing job, everyone. Super, super impressed, amazing. Either, I mean, you're all like super smart and in the medical field, or you pay attention when we have the shows, which I love that, you know, I'm able to be a part of that to be able to help to teach you. Okay, so if you're just tuning in right now, this is the Dr. Janine Show. We've talked about leptin today. We talked about our thyroid gland, how that's related to leptin resistance. And hey, the thyroid, we talked, we focused a little bit on thyroid being low and sluggish and weight gain and all and feeling cold all the time. But the thyroid can actually over function as well with autoimmunity, with Graves' disease. And that would be an indication of the leptin resistance as well. So it's not always just underperforming thyroid function. It's all also can be over. So when there's an imbalance basically, and that's why, you know, in my opinion, a lot of doctors, endocrinologists are not really tackling the thyroid issues the way that they should. They're not looking a little bit deeper, which is related to your brain function and leptin levels, as that has an effect on thyroid. And of course, that pregnenolone steel is all tied into that with the cortisol as well. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, Joy, good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. We also talked today, we made that beautiful flaxseed mask, if you're just tuning in now, and we talked about psoriasis. So we made a blend of different essential oils. So if you missed any of those, you want to see those recipes, just let us know, put it in the comments, and we'll bring it up so that you can screenshot them or write them down really quickly what those recipes are. And of course, if you've missed most of today's show or any of my previous shows, you can always tune in. So just, you know, search up the shows on social media and you'll be able to watch the full shows back because they're stored on certain platforms, which is amazing in the longer form, which is amazing. Thank you for the roses coming in. Sophia, David, thank you. I see all those hearts coming in. Thank you so much. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, what day is it tomorrow for a lot of people? Uh huh. That are celebrating. So happy Valentine's Day to everyone, and and Pancake Tuesday. Oh my goodness. Pa yeah. Who's having pancakes for lunch, breakfast, dinner, every snack meal? No, we don't snack here at the Dr. Jean Show, do we? Right. 
that's, that's against our leptin resistance, and that is not a good thing, right? Okay, so thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing to see you all. Uh, yes, we want to see the psoriasis mask again. So the psoriasis essential oil uh, treatment, that recipe, let's bring that up. Here we go. So this is a blend, of course, with coconut oil, tea tree oil, peppermint, and lavender. Great for other skin conditions as well. Hey, and if you start to have success with any of my recipes, please make sure that you're sending a message to the team. Team Dr. J9, send an email. We'll bring up that email address really quickly as well. The team at Vitatree, so send a message to hello at Vitatree. Any type of success that you've had, we have so many testimonials that come in, some of which I'm actually, so in, I'm in the last stage of editing my third book now, which is amazing. I'm so excited about this book. And, you know, I'm writing in some testimonials from people that have done really well with some of my protocols and what you've learned from me over the years. So that is uh, another possibility that you're actually featured in my book, which would be amazing. But we'll also feature you here live on the Dr. Janine Show. So if you have any good news you've tried anything hey maybe you've tried the soleil water we had a testimonial about that maybe you've stopped eating you know fake olive oil and you're seeing your skin is getting better which is something that we've talked about in a previous episode maybe you've lost weight because you fixed your leptin resistance hey maybe your thyroid's fixed now please i want to hear from you make sure that you're sending that information into the team and just say hey i'm a follower on such and such a platform. I saw Dr. Janine's show. I started doing, or I, you know, started following her tips from her videos, and this is what happened. I would love to hear from you. It, it just, it makes my heart sing. Like, I, I just love to hear the positive feedback from anybody who's, you know, been able to learn something, and I've had a small little piece in that, which is amazing. Okay, the list of ingredients to avoid, sorry, and the Yes, yeah, so the clean vitamins. So what are we looking for? So when we, bad vitamins <laughs> have a lot of bad things in them. So this is what we're trying to avoid when we're looking for a clean vitamin. So let's take a look at this list really quickly. So it should somewhere say whole food vitamin, that it's a clean vitamin to begin with. Meaning, what does whole food mean? It means that those vitamin ingredients are not fake. They're actually coming from nature. When you read those ingredients on the label, you can recognize, you know, if it's a herbal medicine, you might not recognize it, but if it's a a berry or a beet or a carrot, then that's something that recognizable. That's something that you should be able to, you know, not only pronounce, but you know what it is, whole food vitamins coming from nature, okay? Really important. As well as from a GMP manufacturer, there's no magnesium stearate, of course, that flow agent, no silicon dioxide, no titanium dioxide, no other fillers or flow agents. So if you want to screenshot that really quickly, again, really important that we are optimizing what we do ingest. And yes, having a healthy diet, exercise, being outside, some of the exposure, I mean, getting grounded, taking your shoes off, super, super, super important. But for those of you who do choose to take vitamins to supplement what you're already hopefully doing that's healthy, you gotta make sure you're taking the right stuff, whole food vitamins, real, clean vitamins, okay? Really, really important. Um, Marlo, Janine, hi, nice to see you. Even Janine is spelled the same way. How to get the books. The next release will be happening soon. So just stay tuned, make sure you're following, and definitely we'll give you, and it will be available everywhere once we actually do the launch. Um, the other ones are out of print, so they're, we, they will be made available again, so just stay tuned for that. We're working on all, all of that behind the scenes, which is amazing. And, okay, questions about inflammatory gut disorders. I see that from fruit, fruity raspberry gum. Um, inflammatory gut disorders, you've got to clean up that microbiome. So going over to Lucid really quickly, that's just one aspect. So some of what we talked about with candida today, really important, those tips I'm going to pull up in just a second, the candida tips. But this is important that we are getting reconnected with nature. When we're out of connection, we're disconnected from nature, this is when our microbiome can start to have issues and that inflammation ensues, making sure that we're killing off those bad guys. Let's look at the list really quickly because it applies for what you're asking for, inflammatory gut disorders, out into nature that will affect your microbiome, lower your EMF exposure, can't say enough about this. I've got a, you know, a bunch of videos on this, and I will be actually interviewing. So we have a new podcast as well soon to launch. I will be interest, uh, interviewing a big EMF person, so that oh, that's going to be a good interview. I can't wait. Um, stop the sugar and how EMFs, coming back to the EMFs, how EMFs impacts our health in different ways, the microbiome being one of them. 
stop the sugar, increase the fiber. Cabo is my favorite herbal medicines to clean up the microbiome, so for a microbiome cleanse, which is amazing. And of course, after you kill, you've got to put the good guys back in, your probiotics. So a good, high-quality probiotic, really important in that regard. Okay, so I think I've answered all the questions. Make sure you tune in tomorrow at... 1 p.m. So Wednesdays, let's pull that up really quickly. Hashtag Ask Dr. Janine. Please start to use that hashtag so that we can, you know, really flag your comments and your questions. Ask Dr. Janine. That is happening tomorrow. So Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be answering your questions. If I didn't get all your questions today, please tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'll do my best to answer all your questions then. Yes. And yes, the psoriasis oil recipe that we shared today is very good for eczema as well. So please try it out. Blend it up really quickly. If you want to see that really quickly, again, it's the coconut oil, tea tree oil, peppermint oil, lavender oil, all equal parts. And plus, you're adding in the tablespoon of coconut oil. Blend that up and use it on the spots. You will love it. Okay. So thank you so to everyone who tuned in today. It was so lovely to have all of you here. I know you've got a ton more questions. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all your questions. Please tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that I can answer your questions in the Q&A live tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy your Valentine's Day tomorrow if I don't see you. And we will see you next time.